peace and blessings to the family. This is Mambo Hathor Ursuli Akhenaten, aka the Boop Doop Deep 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 And yes, a new year 2020. Let's talk about the 2020 vision of the Trois Femmes d'Egypte. Now, very, very powerful yet very secret loi we'll be discussing. And so we're going to get into the origins of Les Trois Femmes d'Egypte, okay? AKA, also known as Marasa Toi. Toi, T R O I S, Marasa Toi, meaning Marasa of the Three, the Trinity Energy. Now, first and foremost, we must know that whenever the energy of these queens of these three fates of the trinity come to town there's definitely an energy of renewal that is amongst us new energy that has arrived things being set into coming forth for the fruition of it all um every time that there is a beginning of a new cycle they show up no doubt about it and the core functions that they thrive or that they really deal with is guidance, wealth, and protection. Now, very interesting because when we look into the origins, obviously ancient Egypt, of course, when we look at the Orion's belt with the three stars aligned perfectly with the three pyramids, this is a very powerful representation of Les Trois Femmes d'Egypte. As you look into the Marasa Veve, you will see that there are three points on there, i.e. the three points or the three pyramids, okay, the three coordinates with the star constellations in perfect alignment, okay? So, such a powerful energy of these queens, of these three fates. Okay, now they are very, very secretive and they are kept hidden for lots of reasons. In an occultic standpoint and manner, when we look at Napoleon, who was a major occultist, the big thing that he was involved with was the sciences, any sciences he could get his hands on to rule the world. That was the only thing that Napoleon has ever been concerned with when it comes to his research and his voyages, voyage all over. Now, when he went into Egypt, he was told that the science, the mystery, the particular last end or the most highest form of magic that he was looking for at the time could only be found with a man by the name of Toussaint Louverture. Now, Toussaint Louverture was, again, a powerful, profound figure in the Haitian Revolution. But it goes so deep because Napoleon was after him, serious, once he learned that he had the key mysteries to what? The powerful, almighty, secret level of knowledge that deals with mummification, zombification, and that whole thing. Therefore, we have to understand that it was here in the Americas via IET that that secret, that magic and mystery was profoundly used and dissected. But why do you ask even? We are going to get deeper into the connection because there is direct connection. Now, when we look at all of this powerful energy, he was concerned with knowing how to pull down powerful spirits. That's what all of this was about. Calling down powerful loi, that type of energy. Because again, occultists at the end of the day only need to know one thing. How do I get aligned up with power? What do I do to attain it? What do I do to call it forth and make it work on my behalf to rule, to be in power? And so at that particular time, he had a, uh, you want to say, in-law of his named General Leclerc, Leclerc, okay? And General Leclerc was with him. When this was discovered, he sent him out or back rather over into Haiti 
this time with about 25,000 soldiers to accompany him. But within that, there were several thousand that were Egyptian slaves. They were taken with them because they knew that they understood the mystery system. They knew these people were heavy in their sciences. Many of them they took with them so that they could help them, okay, to uh, actually go and fight against, at that time, the people of Isaac, to be in captivity, okay? Nonetheless, as they arrived, you have to understand that the Egyptians carried this secret, this power, the sciences, this energy with them into the land. And hence is where you get trois femmes d'Egypte going and transmigrating over into Haiti. Origins. So again, they came in in that particular time, i.e. when the Egyptians arrived and General Leclerc, as they say, was sick, could not continue, had all kinds of issues to get what he was looking for. The Egyptians then assembled with the native people of the land to begin and to continue in the fight of the rebellion. So hence, the energy transmigrated into the next huge shift that was about to take place. So let's talk about the characteristics of Les Trois Femmes d'Egypte. Now, first and foremost, you know the core principles with this energy, once again, deals with protection, guidance, and wealth. Now, the colors in association are red, blue, and white. Now, let's look at some of these particular energies all around and see where they've been present. When you look at the flags, which flags we know hold a very symbolic energy and represent power and have many, many meanings behind it, you can look at America, i.e., you look at France, you look at London, okay, you go into talking about IET, the DR, you look at Puerto Rico, and many, many others I may not name that carry and deal primarily with that red, white, and blue. It's not by coincidence, people. It never, ever, ever is. It is always <laughs> well calculated, okay? Now, when we look at their energy, when we look at things, for example, like protection, right? Protection could be really closely correlated to the energy with Erzuli Dantor, okay, which is what? Fierce, protective energy, mother, straight up, right? You look at the energy of guidance that could be closely correlated with, say, Gunnar Zuli, okay, being a mother of all, being a guidance force to what all the others will do. You look at the prosperity factor, and that may correlate with, say, La Reina Zuli Freda, or La Siren, for example, and many, many others, okay? But again, just naming a few that are popular, although there are many, many Loa, of course, that do share those principles. Now, again, this high level of secrecy that these particular energy have, they create what we should all know as a divine trinity in that divine trini trinity many mason voodooisans involve themselves and use or call upon the energy of les trois femmes d'Egypte. now when it goes to a more private sector dealing in terms of franguine when you look at that most of the time the lacou or habitation if you will which is again the temple the dwelling space where all of the ceremonies and deeper things come in, calling forth spirit, calling forth the Loa. Most of the times, it has to be something where there are 21 nations, which there are way more than that, Lord knows. However, Vete Nation, as it's commonly called or referred to in Voodoo, and also there has to be an active Laku going on, okay, a sense of a Franguine, more of a natural order going in. All right, for them to even get messages across, if you will. Now, and them being such a secrecy of Loa, you know, they are not those that one could just go and say, oh, they're just floating out there and there's many information or names and things of that nature. They are a very need to know basis. If they need you, 
They gonna call upon you, if you will. They shall, you will see them in that sense. Now, we gotta look that in the beginning, even from times, obviously, of ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt, they've been all over the wall. So again, they symbolize such a great shift or a mark of something powerful that's going to take place, a change, okay? Many times they're pictured, centered around the king, okay? Looking almost as if they are advisors, in a sense. So their energy is just so potent, so powerful. They stand for a beacon. They stand for something coming on the horizons of change, of, again, renewal. So when we talk about pop culture, now, you know, Les Trois Femmes d'Egypte, you know, it's very powerful because they're such a mystical bunch and they pop up all over American television, all over. Like when we look at certain series, you will always see that they come up with the energy of the three fates or an energy of trinity within anything mystical in the form of matriarchal energy. We could look at, for example, the Sabrina, the teenage witch, where you had Prudence and her sisters. It was a trinity. You look at Charmed, the sisters of Charm, trinity. We have a new show that has come upon us called The Witcher recently on Netflix. And it's a little different because they were scattered. The Witcher is actually a male figure, but there are three different kind of feminine representations throughout what's going on. Too close, one not as close. However, first off, we had one named uh, uh, Fring, Fring, Fringilla, Fringilla, which was the black woman, who basically, she's the opposition leader who is basically responsible for trying to take him down, a leader witch, in a sense. Then you had Yennefer, who was a hybrid and half-human, which kind of, they would call her, I guess, like a half toi, a toi bloodline, which was, i.e., like an elf bloodline. Now, when you look again, back to ancient Egypt, that was an energy of the toi people, which originates from the deity Bess, okay, in ancient Egypt. So again, it all ties in. Now, you have also the third one, which was Siri, a princess, and she's yet to know her ability, but yet she is present there representing, again, a trinity format of women that all of the dynamics go on in the show. Now, you can even look at Clash of the Titans, okay, a movie, a film in the 90s, all right, where when he, Percy, was looking for answers, he had to go to none other than the three fates, Okay, um, this energy has been shown so much on television. I mean, not even just the present day, but for a very, very long time. Okay, when you look at a lot of the old shows and now it's recycling, coming back into these newer shows and series, it, nothing's new under a sun. Okay, we look at music. All right, in terms of pop culture, let's look at the music. You ever wonder why? especially when the greatest boom was happening in economy, okay, in the 90s, why there was just this sudden huge fluctuation and increase of girl groups, okay, women coming in Trinity formats. I could go on and on. We know the renowned TLC, you know, you had SWV, you had Jade, 702, Black, now in Vogue, started with four, but finished again to the Trinity. And that's when things, in a sense, kind of really took off. Same thing with Destiny's Child. Destiny's Child started at four, ended at a Trinity of three. So it's very interesting how all of this took place. I mean, the energy is undeniable. And again, like I said, most of those girl groups came out in the 90s. And that was a very prosperous time in the economy, more so for America. So again, this symbolism of that Trinity energy, it is undeniable. It cannot be, um, it cannot be denied. You know, it's been all over our television, all over our music. And, you know, you just, everywhere you went, there was a representation some way, somehow. 
So my personal experience with Les Trois Femmes d'Egypte. Well, first and foremost, I partake in a Gada ceremony. And in the Gada ceremony, there was what we would call an escort, okay? They have forms of escorts that come in when you're in a ceremony. Specifically in this ceremony, as Gada are the spirited elements that deal with water, they deal heavily with communication, things of that nature. There was the Shwal, the person that was there that was possessed, came in and delivered a message personal from Les Trois Femmes d'Egypte to give, saying that they need X, Y, Z done, or to look out for this, or foretelling something that was coming. So that was the personal intake and energy experience that I had with them on that basis. From that moment, I was honored enough to be able to have a dream. In the particular dream, from in the particular temple I was at to sleep in, I was able to get dream transmission with them, furthering some things that were confirmed from what was said. Now, what was powerful about that was when they gave the message, they didn't have the specific names of who they were. It wasn't until I had the dream that they came and gave me the secret code. It's literally like a secret code of their name because they have individual names. Now, I know they always go along, Marasa, Toi, Toi, Femme d'Egypte, but however, they have their own personal names. It is only revealed, though, when they know you need it to do a certain spiritual works or there's something you're about to embark in that's going to be necessary to call them out by name, if you will. So that was a privilege and an honor for me to be able to experience that. So from since that point forward, I've been able to know what that special or secret name in a sense is. Okay. And again, whenever that happens, just know you are meant to do something very important in this particular society, a dynamic of this era. Because again, they don't come around if there's not going to be a significant shift and if you're not going to be a part of that shift. So that is the importance because again, they're not public. So no one can sit up here and tell you that they know their names like that and just going to be giving them out. That would be a complete falseness because they tell you in the dream not to reveal or to take, say their names to anyone outside of you, your ears, your eyes only. Okay. So again, the power of Les Trois Femmes d'Egypte is always on the horizons of a renewal. Okay. They are always here for the spirit of a big impact. So an encounter with them truly does count for a big deal. They are what we call the prophecy women. Okay. And they love music. Music is a very powerful thing to them. Um, they love hearing it. They love, you know what I'm saying, uh, coming with sound, tune, certain things. They're powerful, very. And music is a, again, music, what is that? A frequency, a note, a vibration. And that's the same way this planet itself has a vibration, has a note. Any region, any place you go, different parts of the earth all have a certain tuning and sound vibration it resonates with. So again, that enjoyment, that energy all is coming from this three fates, this energy of, again, music, renewal. Music also sounds off what? A new era. You had your 80s music, you had your 70s, you had your 90s, you have your millennial musics, you have now what? The new music for 2020, a new decade. So again, music always lets you know too where certain shifts and vibrations are moving, okay? Now, when we take a look at what we're experiencing right now in this current time frame, okay, of 2020. Let's really look at what this is. Um, if we take a real good look from past to present, we can see throughout history that at the end of the day, when, it, when they came into IET, it was due to what? A great shift. They knew this would be now the pillar, the beacon, of black freedom, but then ultimately freedom all over the world because IET opened its arms and barriers to people of all color and of all 
from all regions, from everywhere, literally. From the Jews, Poland, French, even the French, the ones, one or twos that were doing or helping. Fight. It was a grandeur time on the planet, period, for freedom. And a huge mark of it. So again, a huge major, again, shift that was taking place. So the ladies, these three fates, if you will, always show up right when important things in that matter are taking place. These are the types of encounters. These are the types of energies and shifts that they partake in. Again, their principle and core. What is it? It's always going to be the guidance, the protection will come. Lastly, the wealth. So again, any civilization that's going to be a major factor that's going to be running, the three fates, les trois femmes d'Egypte, they will always come in and be present when something serious is about to go down. Here we are right now in that serious time. Here we are, new decade, but we're in a situation right now with this, with this country that we are either going to continue on to really hold up our name and title of being the greatest nation on earth by learning from our mistakes and coming through into our matured state to really run and be leaders and stay the leaders, okay, to this country, to this nation. Or we will be noted as the great fall of an empire, of a nation. So we really are at the fates, if you will, of time. And the ladies are here, that's for sure. The feminine energy, this matriarchal energy cannot be denied. And truthfully, in speaking with spirit and just this energy that is so thick and so strong, a woman, I repeat, a woman, should be the next president of the United States of America. The energy alignment is time. It's due for such. And what it will reflect here, it should surely reflect in Haiti as well. The time for the feminine power and presence to rule, to align up with the energy that's out here right now is feminine. That is the principle. That is the ruling principle at the moment. Again, for a new era, for a new shift, a new sense of hope and a new sense of consciousness and ways about doing things. That time is among us for sure. So in closing, I wanted to say that now as we propel together as a family in this new year, I want to let you guys know that I will be holding a service now. The way a service works is that personal information, things like your name, possibly even your birthday and things are given. And we hold what we call a community service, where for a X, Y, Z of the amount you use, you are able to utilize, I would say. Okay, whatever energy that it is that comes up. For example, there's been times it's been Papa Legba. There's been times it's been Cousin, Azuli Danto, um, La Reine Azuli Freda, and so on and so forth. In this time, by popular demand, Les Trois Femmes d'Egypte, this Marasa Trois energy, this, this powerful energy of the three fates. Again, they're not um, super easy and accessible. So again, it is a privilege and I am beyond honored that with Kai P4, we have this particular power and energy out there. So we utilize it. We utilize it. We utilize it in a way where we allow for a community service via the temple. And here it always ends up being beautiful. For details on that, you need to be subscribed. Okay. The link will be below to make sure that you're subscribed, that you can keep up with the updates as I will always send out an email or also big advantage is being in the private group okay which the link will be below so that you can keep up to date when I announce that service is open for the public there's not always a time where this happens but the rare moments that it does I like to make sure everyone is informed and everyone can get a fair chance to participate 
Okay, so again, we'll be doing a lot more of those this year. Also, I'll be coming back in with new series of classes. So again, the link below, okay, to get over to, you know where, okay, will be your one-stop shop to make sure that you can receive emails and updates to everything that's going on Voodoo Diva. Okay, so again, happy new year. Let us continue going in this 2020 vision. Let us mature, raise our vibrations higher, learn more of the power, understand more of the power in this science, in our sacred traditions. Because at the end of the day, we are the ones now who can write the narrative, who can bring the reality out to light. It is our job. It is our duty. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until the next moment of greatness, I send you peace, love, and lots of light.